hospital in the past. Thank you very much. Uh, I interrupted a bit while the Rotarians were still in process. There is a past district governor who has cancelled something to be here and say something. So you and I think this opportunity now is the past I know you are district governor. In this. Civil man, yeah, one minute, please. Then we'll introduce you. You just hold on your good seat. Thank you very much. Kwaji, our parents, and our ministers, the Rotarians. This is from the Kenyan Medical Association. Hmm? From the Kenyan Medical Association. I don't have to say more about it. Yes. I don't know what to say. If you have the time, I do it for us, I would have wanted to say something about it. A different story. And that's what I'm going to say. So, my different stories. I wish to do myself in my community service as a Rotarian. Okay. We've been briefed about our service in the club. But now it was a woman who very many fasts. Enough to be out of service as a Rotarian. In some cases. Okay. Okay. No capacity in the club and the country and the district. Mm -hmm. She was the very first woman to serve as country chair of Rotary. I was the first woman to serve as vice conference chair at the district. And Margaret had also had several firsts elsewhere. As the leader at the country and district, Margaret is remembered for her commitment to serving others, but also for being, being fair, fearless when it comes to saying the truth. Many posts up and I'm able to tell you that the trick to her success was because for her, they, they had 24 hours. And therefore, it was very common for Margaret to give you a call at 1 in the morning and request you a report. That be that. Margaret had um, humor. Many times, cracking jokes about her, her job. And I remember on many occasions the child would tease her and say, Margaret, you seem to be moving very close at your patients. And her answer was always, we are all mad. The difference is the degree. <laughs> but to tell you how committed Margaret was, I'll tell you an incident where she was going to the north and had an accident along the way. And her car got totally beaten off. Margaret went for a checkup, and the following morning she proceeded by public means to complete her duties and came back at no pay. Last year in December, Margaret approached me with a request. He said, Stephen, as the chairman of the Madrotary Cancer Program, I want to give more service to my people. And then she says, I'm a medical doctor, but above all, I'm a cancer survivor. Also, she thought then, and said, can I request the report that you become a cancer run, I become your ambassador, so that I stand up and tell people that it helps to go for screening early. Because when you do, then you survive like I've done. God had other plans before the time will come. Margaret left us. May her soul rest in peace. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I will pray that we are forgiven for very putting people at pressure. But may I call the chairman of the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council in one second? With that. <laughs>
No, a story is told about four blind men um, trying to describe what an elephant is. And uh, depending on which part they touched, they gave a slightly different story what an elephant is. But they all agreed on one thing, that this thing is big. So I'm going to talk about Margaret from a slightly different angle. That is Margaret as a regulator of medical practice. It's very difficult to find words that describe Margaret otherwise. Because this is a colleague who was passionate and committed to lots of the things that she was doing. Just look at your service order, order of service, on that picture that you have of her. If those of you have got it. And then you can see the face of Margaret telling the world that here I am, I am ready, I'm coming, and I'm going to serve you. Margaret thought great, acted great, and left lasting impression wherever she stepped. And this was possible because of one great gift that the Lord had given her, the gift of the tongue. Am I telling you? Yes. <laughs> Margaret had a gift of the tongue. And she used it quite effectively, consistently, sometimes quite aggressively. And sometimes they are going to be aggressive to get things done. So I think she had no apology for some of the things that she said. But as a colleague in the medical profession, she did quite a lot of things. May I ask all the doctors who are in this room, please, to stand up. Wow. You can see them, thank you. You can see them in all shapes, the young ones, not so old ones, the very old ones, and they are all here to come and remember Margaret. But, as a colleague who I work with in the Uganda Medical and Dental Practitioners Council, our main emphasis was on patient safety. That patients should have access to safe, effective medical care. And one of the determinants of patient safety is the quality of doctors that are practicing. And this was a big concern to her, that it looks like the quality of the products that we are getting is going a bit down. And uh, some of us tend to agree with her. But what we are saying is that it could be better. It's not that bad, but it could be better. So to that end, our emphasis and drive has been to try to improve the quality of training in our medical schools. And we have done this, and as I speak, we were sharing some of our thoughts with the Ministry of Health and Education as to how to ensure that quality of training in this country is maintained. And we have suggested certain things like pre-entry exams and exams at regular intervals, which we think will be able to do this. She also advocated for professionalism in the medical profession and for any profession at all. Professionalism and ethics is key to the success of that profession. And Margaret was a driver for this, and she did this throughout the country, throughout the region, and in the whole world. In the East African region, she made it possible for us to have what we now call the joint inspection of the medical schools, where we look at this uh, quality of training in our medical institutions. She was also behind the information of the African Medical Council's uh, regulatory authorities. She was also responsible for what is going on at the national level. <clears throat> when we were in London about two years ago, she approached us and said, there is a vacancy in the leadership of IAMA, that is in the National Association of Medical Regulatory Authorities. Do you think that we should make a shot of this? We say definitely will support you to do this. And the country of Uganda supported her, 
and she was elected unopposed as the president of the International Medical Regulatory Authority. And she was the first woman. She was the first woman. She was the first Uganda. She was the first African. Really, I could say more about Margaret, but if we are looking for a hero in this country, this is one. I don't know what criteria is used, but according to my criteria, I think she meets and surpasses uh, all this. UMA. Jesus once said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. If others cannot recognize Margaret, I think UMA must put in a system to recognize people like Margaret. We will draw up the list of criteria for inclusion on that list. Somehow I think I might also be in that list. <laughs> now here I'm surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who testify to what I've just said about Margaret. So I've got here international representations from the various regulatory councils uh, in the region, in Africa, and in the world. And I'll introduce them uh, one by one. I've got the president of the Kenya Medical Association. I've got Dan Yonga, Dan Yonga, who is the CEO of the Kenya Medical Board, but also is a member of the Committee of the International Medical Regulatory Authority and is here actually representing the president of the uh, association authority. I've got his name is very difficult to pronounce. You might have by the time to love it. But he is the president of the South African Health Professional Council. And he's also a member of the Committee of the AMRA. Now, just, just look at this. There are three Africans represented on that body. And it's a body of nine people. And here you've got three people from Africa representing that. And two of them are from Uganda. Surely. I've got this big man. Uh, he's Eli. He's from the Kenya Medical Board. And he's Lieutenant Professor Nagoa, who is the President and Chairman of the Kenya Medical Board. And also the Chairman of the Association of the African Medical Councils Association. And we've got our brother here from the East African community, when Katende, who is representing the East African community. Now, these are people who say, rather than send our messages, we are going to bring our messages. So I'm going to ask the chairman of the Kenya Medical Board and also our board just to bring the people. One minute, I must say what I have to say. Me. I knew my colleague, Dr. Margaret Mugere, about 10 years ago. And I stand here, Africa of Kenya, for the whole continent. And since I came, it is not going to be fair to tell me that to sit down and do I, I intend to go and I agree. And because I don't want to waste time, I want to go and just want to each other. What does somebody need to do in order to be remembered? Uh, is any of you going to be remembered for anything? My colleague is going to be remembered from what I've said, from what I've heard, but what I pick from her is her intellectual argument and say what she wants to say without fear of failure. <laughs> My colleague was very brave, extremely brave, braver than myself. <laughs> because when we met in Sumo last year, she spoke, she openly spoke to us about cancer and the time.
I mean, it's funny, as I drove from the airport on the, the freeway between the Tebet and the Empire, I saw a billboard for a kindergarten. So I'm, I'm going to read That says, British owned, British run, high standards. <laughs> <laughs> Until we decolonize ourselves. <laughs> as Margaret has done, until we make Africa better, until we do not see boundaries in Africa, that is what our work is about, until we stop being tribal, until we live up to be decent human beings, we will always, always be behind. And I hope in the memory of Margaret, our women will stand up and our men will listen. Family. 
And I just want to say from myself, we directed Margaret from the year 2000, when her and the chair of the Kenya Medical Association convened the first meeting for the ministers responsible for health in East Africa, and that gave birth to the East African Medical Boards and Councils Integration that has flourished today, and Margaret will be missed by our colleagues. May our soul rest in time of peace. Thank you. Following on what my colleague from South Africa has said about the women, I think it would be unfair not to allow Jacqueline to speak. <laughs> Jacqueline is the person that you had was at Clock Tower, and then we started. So Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start very sad if I did not speak because I was following in Margaret's footsteps. She was the first female chair of the Uganda Medical Association and she came to my inauguration last year as the first Kenyan female <coughs> chair of the <laughs> So the Kenyan Medical Association and the medical fraternity in Kenya received the news of the death of our colleague and friend Margaret Mugarero with great sadness. She has been associated with us for decades and she was an honored guest at all our annual meetings. The theme of our last meeting, Physicians' Health, was particularly relevant to her and she made a passionate presentation on keeping doctors healthy. We were looking forward to spending some more time with her at our upcoming meeting in April, but sadly this was not to be so. So her passion overflowed through the entire health sector and she was a leader of local and international doctors' associations where her leadership was evident for all to see. Death has robbed our profession of a great advocate a leader, a trailblazer, and an example to be emulated by all doctors across the globe. We stand today in solidarity with her family, friends, and the Ugandan medical fraternity as we mourn the passing of our colleague and friend. Please receive condolences from our members in Kenya and the entire leadership of the Kenya Medical Association. I'm here with the treasurer, Dr. Simon Kibu, who also loves to photograph, and her affiliates in the specialist associations and for the citizens of the Republic of Kenya, whose lives, lives she touched directly and indirectly. May she rest in peace. I would like to sum it all. I'd like to thank my colleagues, and I'd like to thank Jose Sezi for giving us my grade. May I also rest in peace.